I bet this whiskey is gonna be out of this world. Well, let's hope so. This week we're looking at the Whistler Dark Symphony. Welcome back to the channel, I'm Matt, I'm the Whiskey Nerd. I'm Rose and I'm the Whiskey Nerd. And like we said, this week we're looking at the Whistler Dark Symphony. So let's get it into the glass and tell you a little bit more about it. Now, also just look at this bottle. It's just... so cool. So it's, it's like matte blue as well, like the whole bottle of glass. Yeah, like is. look at that. It's so cool. And look, you've got like, like what, Dark Symphony, there's some of the astrological signs, but there's only like, what, half of them here? So mm. is that like... Yeah, what does well, that mean? On the box, it's like a more of a full circle, but uh, the box is right here. You can see like there's more of the symbols all the way around. Okay, because so my birthday's in here somewhere, I won't say where. <laughs> yeah, so the Whistler, it's from the Boan Distillery. Like mm -hmm. most of their releases, the bottles do kind of look cool. They've all got different stories. Like there was one called The Good, The Bad and The Smoky, and it had a lot of references to the cowboy film, The Good, The Bad and The Ugly. This one, it's about like, the references in the bottle are about like, connections to the stars, mm -hmm. the sun, the Astronomy. planets. Astronomy. Like, in fact, even the um, the alcohol percentage of it is 43.14, which is a reference to pi. So oh. 43.14, <laughs> so all like the circles. If you look on the, you can see there's loads of circles here reference, all the planets are there. So it's, that's the kind of reference there. Yeah. It is a sourced whiskey, like I said. So Bo the Boan Distillery, which is the brand behind the Whistler, they recently just turned four years old. In fact, we were at an event at the distillery marking their four-year-old birthday. Yeah. And so like, they're now, at this point, heading to four and a half years old. So you're gonna see, I'd say, some whiskey from their own stock coming out mm. soon enough. But right now they are still working through the kind of sourced stock that they got in their kind of early production Which is called days, the Whistler. Which is called the Whistler. And this whiskey is, like I said, it's sourced. It's sourced from the Great Northern Distillery, mm -hmm. uh, which produces a lot of whiskey for other brands. Sometimes it'll produce just the grain whiskey and someone will blend in their own malt or vice versa. But this whiskey is all sourced from the G&D. It's a blended whiskey. It's 80% grain whiskey that was oh i love grain that was aged in bourbon casks for four years it's 10 percent malt whiskey that was aged in bourbon casks for 10 years for, for four years and it's 10 percent malt whiskey that was aged in oloroso sherry casks <gasps> for four years as well oh, i love oloroso sherry casks but instead of just like sourcing and blending it together with the whistler are doing kind of something cool if you saw the video where we visited the Boan distillery, I'll put a link to that up there. We actually got down into like their barrel warehouse and they have loads of cool barrels. And the whiskey here that was aged for four years in those barrels, it was finished for one year for 12 months in a Neoc cask. Neoc. Neoc. So Neoc, it's this kind of proprietary way of re kind of invigorating barrels from the ASC Cooperage in France. Oh, so, oh, you see that ASC barrel? Yeah, so it actually says it on the back here, the mm -hmm. Neoc process. Neoc means like the new era of oak cask, oh. or the new era of cask. I think the new era of cask is just translated to French, but it sounds better, the new era of oak cask yeah. in English. And um, what they do is they shave down the individual kind of staves inside the barrel, they hand shave it down, to get a new kind of surface on it. So if you were to take, because it was, uh, sorry, it was an old cognac barrel. Uh -huh. So if you were to just take an old barrel and put whiskey into it, you're gonna get a lot of cognac influence. If you were to char it again, it sometimes might not work out very well because the wood has kind of, it's got it's got a lot of liquid in it. It's, mm. it's, it's kind of worn in the inside. Yeah. So by shaving the inside and then retoasting it, I'll see if I can find a picture of it up there because yeah. it looks kind of cool. You get this brand new kind of charred surface up top, but then behind that charred layer, you've also got this area where there's still a little bit of that old influence. Okay. From it, so you're going to get like the brand new fresh virgin oak char, tempered with some of that old kind of the cognac barrel influence coming through from the wood. They whistle the whistler have said they've got other kind of wood types that were uh, ex burgundy wine casks, ex Bordeaux wine casks, Ooh. and they all give different kind of flavors. So it's not just taking an old barrel and making it to a virgin oak. It does give different flavors apparently. Okay. So they might be putting out those soon enough. That sounds really fun. And yeah. also all these little tidbits. If you look, they're in the back. So you get to learn about how what they're doing and everything. It's not like a secret, it's like a, a cool thing yeah. you get to look like, at. There's a little, like, I'll see if I can put a picture of it if it's not clear there. Like they show you how it's done and they explain it more there on the back of how the Neoc process is kind of working. Well, that's all well and good, but I want to know if it'll taste out of this world. Well, let's, I think, go in for the nose and hopefully it tastes 
out of this world. Cheers. Cheers. Whoa, I have a theory. She's a theory, what's Hold the theory? So, so, dark sympathy, dark sympathy. Darkness. darkness, the night, stargazing. What does stargazing happen during? Well, the night, and it's black, so what would they do? Black fruits. Yeah, there's definitely like, it makes sense, right? Like this whole theme is really entangled. It's it definitely like dark fruits, like there's black currants, blackberries, like those kind of tart, dark fruits. Yeah, but it's like a blackberry pie, but in my nose. That yeah, like almost like a pie, like the are. Oh, that's great because they're kind of like so slight spices. Maybe? Yeah, there's some baking spice in there, almost like um like a clove spice that sort of stuff. Yes. And almost like. Some kind of biscuity grain, like yes. cooked grains. Like obviously, eighty percent of it is grain whiskey. Yes. So there you are going to get that kind of. Cook. Maybe the cookness comes yeah. from the recharring after they hand shape the inside. Yes. So you will get that. You will. You will get that kind of oak spice. It's not mm -hmm. overwhelming. Now again, no. it's been four years in. Most of it's been four years in bourbon barrels. Yes. So that's going to give you a soft, sweet kind of mm -hmm. sweet notes. Mm -hmm. Then I'll only spend uh, twelve months in that. Neoc cask, which isn't like a proper virgin oak. It has, like I say, it's only a little bit of virgin oak and then it's got the uh, under layer, I suppose, of cognac influence. The under layer. Like, I'm not really getting a huge cognac influence off it. Like, yeah. like some cognac barrels, they give kind of, depends on what it is, can give kind of nutty notes, it can mm. give kind of like almost apple-y notes. I'm not getting a huge amount of that, but it's there. It's more, it's it's just different than a virgin oak. So it's I think it is, it is yeah. you're getting something there, but it's not like, upfront cognac. Yeah, and I'm not really honestly sure what cognac tastes like, but I know it doesn't smell like, this doesn't smell like virgin oak. No. I'm getting like, um, almost like a, like a burnt orange peel, like if, mm. like you flambéed or flamed or torched, like a little bit of an orange peel. Like, oh my. Where it's not like, um, it's not like, not like an orange citrus peel, where okay. it's more like a sugary citrus peel. It's like a like, dried one maybe, then you kind of Yeah, where you get it? those kind of, yeah, it's, it's like that dried kind of burnt orange, rather than being like just a citrusy peel, like where you get those almost fresh fruity citrus, it's like Okay. That. Yeah. I can get that. Yeah. You getting anything else in the nose? No, I just have blackberry pie. Now. Just blackberry pie. Just okay. blackberry pie. Well, do you want to go in for the palate and see if it's still blackberry pie? <gasps> Let's find out. Let's find out. On the palate, it's... It's much less fruity, like the nose. Yeah, my pie's not there anymore. Yeah, the, the, the sweet kind of blackberry, they're still kind of there, but it's much more oak for it. Very oaky. It's yeah. like um, like charred oaky forward. Yeah. And the blackberry pie has left. The blackberry pie has left the building. It's definitely like... Like I ate it with my nose on the first bit and not with my mouth. Yeah, it's, it's, it's more, it's like... Still got that kind of clove spice, still got that kind of Yeah, it's just hit, more. Which is more of it up front yes. yeah, on, the, on the palate. I'm gonna yeah. go in for a second sip and see if I can find any of those fruity notes. Okay. Yeah. Like the, the mouthfeel is, it's quite light as well. It's not like, so. Yeah, it's not like a uh, viscous. It's not like this, it's not like going out. Mouth coating. Coating your palate, like you are getting that oak, you are getting that, again, lots of that kind of like the burnt orange, those yeah. kind of dark. Almost bitter, heading to the, like dark chocolate. Yeah, like a lot of dark chocolate coming yeah. through, like that kind of really high cocoa. Not like a like a sixty percent, maybe more like an eighty percent cocoa, where you get that bitterness. Yeah, the bitty through. bitterness. Yeah, not really like a coffee note. No. No, more into that dark chocolate. Kind yeah, of, kind of like bitter, an eighty-five percent. Like an eighty-five percent dark cocoa. Yeah. Yeah. There's definitely lots of like those oak tans. Yes. Like very high in that. Oak tan, like it was all I think American oak, like the cognac barrels are old American oak. Yeah. So it's not like a French oak where it's going to be very um, like tannin forward, very like sharp. It's just it, but it still has lots of that oak tan. It's like that. I agree. That recharring process has really I think come to the fore here. Yes, like it's it, at the forefront. It's at the forefront here on this. So do you want to go in? I think for the finish. Yes. Let's see how it wraps up. To so see how it kind of like lingers on. Sure. Let's do this. Let's do it. Cheers. <coughs> So on the finish, I, again, like I said, the fruitiness wasn't really there on the palate, so it's not gonna be there yeah, in the there's finish. there's still no more pie. There's no more of that blackberry pie. Like, maybe there's a little bit of like that kind of the tart blackberry notes, but again, it's it's much more of that oak, like that oak spice is there. The oak spice is definitely lingering on. Yeah, so I, for me, the finish ends pretty abruptly. Yeah. Like the, it just kind of is there and just goes, like yeah. it just disappears, it's like very strong and it doesn't even just like 
even out or peter out slowly just boom gone yeah like i'm just getting like a little bit of like that oak tingle the oak spice. yeah like my mouth is a little watery from yeah, it probably like the tannins and stuff yeah but the most of the whiskey flavor has kind of faded off like there's no real lingering caramel sugar no nothing like i don't that. think i got caramel this entire no, time nothing it's none of that kind of sweet notes no it's no finish, yeah, yeah. Before we give our final thoughts on the whiskey, if you're new here, scroll down, hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button. We put out uh, whiskey reviews on Wednesdays, we put out cocktail recipes on Fridays, and there'll be a cocktail recipe featuring this Ooh. on Friday, so come back and check out that. But for now, I'm not I'm not 100% sold on this whiskey. Oh! Yeah, I mean, like maybe if the, the cognac finishing wasn't 12 months, it would maybe like six months or nine months or so. Like, cause I yeah. think that, that oak has come to the front. I think the oak ochred powered it. it. Sorry, it that was powered. really bad. It overpowered it. Yeah. Like I really liked the, the nose. nose. The nose was lovely. It was wonderful. It was this great pairing. It was pie. So you got like the oak, you got the fruit. Yeah. And then the palate was just too oak forward for me and then the finish she didn't get any of like the sweetness coming back. back yeah it was a lot of like um like orange i got a lot of like that burnt citrus that burns mm, burnt. roasted orange yeah. yeah and like that's why the cocktail i have for this features a lot of orange notes in oh. it to kind of tie in with that also with the sweetness to kind of level it level Bounce it back it out. out but yeah on, on the on the palette it was it was a little bit too oaky i think for me it was yeah. a little too oaky for me as well yeah so it, it's a good idea. I think I wanted to see what they're doing with the other barrels. The bottle but looks cool. The bottle looks cool. Like the Worcester do make cool looking bottles, but just it's not 100% there for us. I yeah. Think. Yeah. If you really, really like if, oak yeah. or charred oak taste in your whiskey, then this is the whiskey. Yeah. Like for if you. you're a fan of like bourbons or those kind of more. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah when yeah, you get yeah. that oak spice. Yeah. Yeah. Good. yeah. So I think that's all there is to say about this whiskey. If you've tried anything from the Whistler, let us know down below what your favorite was. If you have tried this one and you like it, let us know. If you're like a bourbon drink or something and you yeah. really liked it, let us know. Otherwise, we will see you next time. Sláinte. Bye-bye.